Hello everyone, welcome to the video and to some lead code problem by IntelliPad. If you are an engineering student approaching placement, you must have started preparing for DSA concepts. There are many mediums that you can utilize to do so, but one that is highly regarded is lead code. Most of the time, companies directly provide coding interviews question out of this platform itself. And hence, it is very important to look into the challenges that lead code has in offer. One of those very first coding DSA preparative problem that you will come across on lead code is to some problem. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to solve this problem. But before we dive into the session, I would like to request you to enable both the subscribe button and bell icon for IntelliPad YouTube channel so that you won't miss out any updates coming from our team. So let's begin with today's agenda. We will start by understanding the problem. Then we will try to analyze different problem solving methods and analyze their time and space complexity. Later on, we will cover coding solution for this problem using C++ and finally we will conclude the session. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda for today's video. So let's understand the problem first. Here we have given an array of integers, nums and the target and we have to return the indices of two numbers such that they add up to the target. Here we have to assume that each input would have exactly one solution and we may not use the same element twice. So what exactly is the two sum problem? Well it's quite simple. We have given an array which contains the elements 2, 7, 11 and 13 and the indices are 0, 1, 2 and 3 and the target. What we have to do is, we have to return the indices of two numbers such that it adds up to the target. Suppose a target is 15, then we will iterate through the array to find the two numbers such that they add up to 15. Our initial step involves examining the element at index 0 which is 2 and pairing it with the element located at index 1 which is 7. Here the sum of these two elements is 9 which is not equal to the target that is 15 then we will proceed to the next index that is 2 here the sum is equal to 13 which is not equal to 15 then we will move further to the index 3 here we can see that the sum is equal to 15 which is equal to the target hence we will return the indices 0 and 3 I hope now we are clear with the question now let's try to execute the code here we have given a function named toSum which takes nums and target as a parameter. Now we will create an empty vector named result to store the result of the output. Then we will find the size of the array and store it in a variable n. Now we will iterate through the array for i. Then we will iterate through the array for j. Now we will check if nums of i plus nums of j is equal to target. Then we will store the indices i and j in the result using the pushback function. And then we will return the result. In case we didn't find a valid output, we will simply return the result at the end of the function. Now coming to the main function, we have array which contains the elements 2, 7, 11 and 15 and the target is equal to 18. Here we are calling the toSum function and storing its value in result. If the result is empty, then we will print no solution found. Else, we will print the indices of required elements. Now, let's execute the code. Here, we can see that the indices are 1 and 2. Here, in the main function, we can see that at index 1, the element is 7 and at index 2, the element is 11. And when we add these two, we will get the value equal to the target that is 18. So what do you think is the time complexity for this code? Well, it is the order of n square. 
which is not considered as a good time complexity. So we will try another approach for better time complexity using hash map concept. Hash map is a type of data structure used to store key value pairs where values can be replicated but the keys are unique. Suppose we have an array which contains the elements 2, 7, 11 and 15 and the indices are 0, 1, 2 and 3 and a target. What we have to do is we have to subtract numbers from the target until we get the complement which is present in the both array as well as in the hash map. For example, a target is 18. So what we'll do is we will iterate through the array and start looking for the number in the hash table such that it adds up to 18. Here in our array, we begin with the index 0 that is element 2. So we will subtract 2 from the target. We will get the complement 16. We will then verify whether 16 is present in our array as well as in the hash table and it is not. We will save 2 and its index 0 in the hash table. Similarly, we subtract 7 from the target. We get the complementary 11, which is present in the array but not in the hash table. So in this case, we will add 7 and its index 1 into the hash table and proceed. At index 2, we subtract 11 from the target to get the complement 7. Here, we can see that 7 is present in the array as well as in the hash table. Hence, we will return the indices 1,2, which is our final output. Then, there is no need to traverse further once we find the target. Now, let's try to execute the code. Here, we have function name sum which takes nums and target as a parameter. We need a map to store elements and index, so let's take a map named numMap. Now we need an empty vector to store the result, so let's take a vector named result. Now we will start traversing through the loop. Now we will find the complement. If the complement is in the map, then it must not be pointing to the end. If this condition is true, then we will store the indices of complement and the current element to the result using pushback function. Then simply break and come out of the loop. If we didn't find it, we will simply add the current number to the hash map. And finally, we will return the result. Now, coming to the main function, we have array named nums which contains the elements 2, 7, 11 and 15 and the target is 9. Now here we are calling to some function and storing its value in result. Now finally we are printing the result using for each loop. Now let's run the code. Here we can see that our output is 0 and 1. In our array at index 0 the element is 2 and at index 1 the element is 7. When we add these two elements we will get 9 that is our target. Now what do you think about the time complexity for this code? Well it's just executing in big of n time. And with this we come to the end. We have covered the ins and outs of solving two sum problem. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and with this knowledge of two sum problem I guarantee you will be able to solve similar problems without a hitch. Thank you for watching this video till end and don't forget to hit like and subscribe for our Intelli Part YouTube channel. Just a quick info guys, 
IntelliPath offers full stack web developer course in collaboration with ENICT Academy IIT Guwahati. Through this course, you can learn everything from front end web development to back end web development from esteemed IIT Guwahati faculties and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given below in the description and take a first step towards career growth in the field of web development.